Hi, I'm Brian Gazinski at Super Shocks. Today we're out here in the shop. We're going to take a little bit of a look at the bike, the shocks, how things work, stock suspension, and go through all that stuff to give you people a little better idea of what we're doing with suspension, why we upgrade it, and what it can do for you and make your ride a lot better, make riding these bikes a lot more fun. These are great bikes. They look awesome. They sound great. They're a lot of fun to ride. Great American tradition, right? Get on your Harley ride across the country. But the suspension's not so good. That's where we found a need to fill a void that wasn't being taken care of as good as it could be. And we found ways to improve the ride of these things to make riding these so much more fun, so much more enjoyable. Take away all those harsh little constant annoyance feelings that you get, feedback from the road. Make the bike handle a lot better. And then when you hit that set of railroad tracks or that big pothole, you don't get jolted off the seat. You can ride over those things now with a set of super shocks and laugh about it. It's not even going to bother you. We found ways to make these bikes ride phenomenally well, and we're going to share it with you. We want you to see what we do and how we do it. Let's take a look at the stock suspension options. Over here, we can look at the old air shocks. These have been on Harleys for since 1984, or even earlier than that, actually. So this is just a, an old air shock, came off a bike. Every suspension system is going to have a sweet spot where it's going to feel okay. These things had their sweet spot. It was a little hard to find it, but people out there did find them, and they had some happiness with riding these shocks. It wasn't always the greatest, but it was probably good enough for most people. Some of the problems they had with them was the airlines. They got these little push-to-connect airlines that go right into here, and there's several of them on the bike. Those are all sources of air leaks. These things ran at lower pressures, so it didn't take many pounds of air to leak out of the system. And it happened pretty quickly, maybe even a day or a week, depends on, on the bike and, and the air leak. The shocks had an air leak. These are kind of lower quality products, you know. They're, they're cheaply made. They're made in foreign countries with the cheapest labor they can use. They're made high production environment. It's a shock to make it as inexpensively as possible get it on your bike get the bike off the showroom floor it's not a performance suspension it's just something that's adequate enough to ride it then through the years within the last five years more harley started showing up with these shocks coil over shock these air shocks also have a spring in them too by the way and the air is just used as an assist to help make some adjustment for different rider weights which is a nice feature, but it doesn't quite work as well as it needs to. And they have low quality damping. Same problem here. You got a better spring setup, but you got a low quality dampener. You can see it's just got a welded end cap. This is high, high production type stuff. Things like you'd see on your passenger cars. And suspension for motorcycles is a lot different than passenger cars. We're dealing with a motorcycle that weighs a lot less, has a lot shorter wheelbase, and the rider weight is a bigger percentage of the total weight of the vehicle. So the suspension has got a different job to do than it does in your car. That's why quality suspension for your motorcycle costs more than just some cheap aftermarket shocks for your car. That's what these kind of are. This is another inexpensive solution to get it on a bike, get the bike off the showroom floor. It's a one size fits all, meaning every rider that buys a Harley gets the same shock setup doesn't matter if you weigh 150 pounds or 350 pounds, you're getting the same shock. But the job of the shock is totally different with those riders. It's a big swing in weight. You know, it's 200 pounds. You need a different shock, different spring setup. These have a nice adjuster on them, easy to use. This goes on the left-hand side of the bike. You can take the saddlebag off, reach in there, turn this. It's a nice feature to have. Allows you some fine-tuning adjustment. The biggest problem is, again, this is a one size fits all, so for most people, this is too stiff already. So it doesn't matter where you adjust it, it's still too stiff. It doesn't have enough range to be soft enough. With this set of shocks, <coughs> this is the right side shock, which you can see, much different. No adjustment, much lighter spring. Look at the difference in spring size. Even the size of the shock is different. You know, they're, in this right side shock, virtually does nothing. It's just a passenger on the bike. I can show you over here what I'm talking about. If we just take this shock right off of a bike, you can easily just compress it. There's no control. 
There's no dampening. It's got a lot of gas pressure. You can see by the way it bounces back. But there's no spring rate. There's nothing. This is your right side shock on all your new Harley models. Not very impressive. Ride quality also not very impressive. Without proper dampening, we're only running on one shock. This shock, we can't do that with. This thing's so stiff, you can't move it. I'd knock this shelf over trying to move this shock. So you got one shock doing all the work. That leads into another problem. With the Harley, the swing arms are rubber mounted. Rubber mounted swing arm, you're only using one shock, one spring, so you get torsional flex. Many riders have felt it. When you run this thing into a corner at any kind of higher rated speed, it feels a little unstable, a little uncomfortable, because the bike is flexing, it's twisting. A balanced set of shocks makes a huge improvement to the handling because it's not allowing that flex to happen. Let's talk about, you know, the shock is a, it's a uh, low quality, um, we call it an emulsion shock. So it's, it's not got a separator piston, it's got gas in it, like I said, I can feel it and show it to you, but it's an emulsion shock. So the gas and oil mix. When gas and oil mix, it creates foam, just like you take oil into a cup and shake it up or into a bottle, it's got air cavities in it. Those air cavities go through the dampening, but the dampening doesn't dampen air. It can only dampen in oil. So as oil gets cavitated, it's got less dampening capability. These things already don't have much dampening capability, so the amount of fade is very minimal anyway, because they don't have much to start with. But it only makes it worse. So with Super Shocks, we've built a high quality monotube separated piston gas shock. So what that means is the oil is in this half, always in oil. Then there's a separator piston with nitrogen pressure. So the nitrogen pressure is dry. It keeps the oil pressurized. So the, the piston only dampens in oil all the time. So there's no fade. There's no cavitation. There's no loss of performance. You can run these things as hard as you want, as long as you want, and you get great performance and great feel. It doesn't change. With that comes longevity. We use the right oils that are built to our specifications to perform in this particular shock with the materials we use for the piston, for the piston seal, for the body, the finishes we use, the anodizing. It all works together with the oil to create a shock that lasts a really long time. Clearances are super critical. All of our parts are precision machined in our shop to exact size tolerances so that we can build the perfect shock time and time again and guarantee longevity. That's why these have a lifetime guarantee. Once you buy a set of these, you're never going to need to buy another shock again. The test sets we have out there, we've got four different riders doing longevity testing. They're all over 50,000 miles and none of them has seen a loss in performance or um, any change in the way the bike handles or rides. Every year those shocks come back to us, we take them apart, we look at them, we sample the oil, in one of the shocks, the other shock keeps the original oil in it so that we can keep longevity testing on the oil to see how long the oil lasts. All our shocks are serial numbered so we know exactly what shock has what in it. And we have not seen any change in oil performance or in size change in the bore. So there's no wear, there's no oil quality deterioration at all. Everything is staying exactly the way it should be at 50,000 miles. So I'm confident enough to say that this shock will outlast your bike. I don't care if you ride 200,000 miles, I believe this shock will do that. And no problem, you can move it to your next bike. Even if there is something that happens to this shock and it needs repair, every component is replaceable and repairable because we make everything ourselves. So we can replace just a rod on, just a bearing, just a seal, just a body, just an adjuster, whatever part, just a spring. Springs go bad. That's probably their biggest chance of something going wrong with this is the spring because springs will only go through so many cycles before they're going to start to lose rate and they're going to fall off. But we can always replace the spring. Easy to do. With super shocks, they're all built based on the rider weight. So we can do what the factory can't do because we know who's riding the bike. So we know your weight, how you ride the bike, if you got a tour pack on, if you don't. We take all these things into consideration, passengers, trailers, whatever it is you got going on, we can give you the right spring rate and the right dampening. So it suits you, the rider. We made them easy to adjust. 
you'll not see this on any other shock on the market. A numbered preload adjustment scale. So this makes setting the preload for the rider weight and tuning it super easy. Each one of these machine grooves is an eighth of a turn. So you can make an eighth adjustment, a quarter adjustment, three eighths, a half, so on. It's easy to set, easy to tune. It's all based on rider weight. So with the set of shocks, you get a setup chart. You find the rider weight, it takes you down to a setting number. It tells you how to adjust them based on what you feel. So you get the shocks on your bike, Set it up based on your weight, whether you're solo, two up, whatever it is you're doing. Go for a ride. Ride 20 to 50 miles over the same roads you normally ride. Ride the same way you normally do and see what it feels like. If the bike feels a little bit firm, like you're feeling the smaller bumps too, you're not really getting bottom outs, but you're feeling smaller bumps, you need to go softer. Stop, go a quarter turn softer. Ride again. 20 to 50 miles, see what it feels like. Keep evaluating and fine tuning it and you'll find the sweet spot pretty quick with these and you'll be right down the road riding smooth as can be. You'll have great bottoming resistance. You won't feel the small bumps. It'll be plush, controlled, great shock, easy to ride, easy to set up. These are things that you don't see on any other shock. You know, we have a bearing in the end. So it's a high quality race quality. We use the same thing in our racing shock. Monoball bearing in the end. Um, Hardened and ground shafts, polished. Everything is precision made, hand assembled, dyno tested and tuned to match specifically for what the rider is. So you get the best of both worlds of bottoming resistance and plush ride. With every suspension system, like I said before, it's got a sweet spot. And our objective is to make that sweet spot as big as possible so you can get the best ride over a range of conditions and rider weight ranges too. So let's look at what we have to offer here. We've got things that nobody else has, like custom color options. We can make about any custom color spring from different powder coat colors to chrome or all blacked out like this one is. You know, great color options. This is, you know, a lot of guys with custom bikes. Harleys are all about customization. This adds another level to that customization where you can go to our website, pick out the color you want that matches your bike or what you want to have, and we'll get that set of springs powder coated for you, your set. There'll only be one of those in the world. And then we have the, any of our shocks can get the custom color spring. So you can add that to anything. The Premier Series, this is the shock that we make for touring bikes, trike, Dyna, Sportster, V-Rod, and FXR models. Any bike with an external shock, this shock will work on there. We got a setup for it based on rider weight, right spring rate, right dampening. For the touring model specifically, we have four different weight ranges that these fit into. So it's not just a standard and a heavy. It's like group one, group two, group three, group four, and we got them based on weight for solo and two up. Great shock, it makes a huge improvement to the ride of the bike. Night and day difference over stock. For the touring models, we have the premium series. The premium series comes with a relocation mount. This mount attaches to the swing arm. I'll explain more about this when we get to looking at the bike and how it fits and why it works the way it does. But for now, let's just understand that it mounts right to the swing arm and locks into place and it moves the shock mounting point back to here. This gives us options for more travel or lower ride heights with still more travel than any other shock. Back to your factory shocks, or like a street glide comes with a 12 inch shock. An ultra comes with a 13. Our shortest one is a 13 and it's gonna be an inch lower than a street glide. So you get three inches of travel where the street glide normally has two and you're an inch lower in height. Or for like a guy with an ultra, you get a 14 inch shock to sit in your bike with three and a half inches of travel. So it's an inch more or a half inch more than the factory three inch, and it's gonna sit a half inch lower than the factory bike does because of our relocation mount. So you get more travel, lower height, way better ride. With suspension, it's gotta have movement, room to move. It's gotta go up and down. It's gotta extend just as much as it's gotta be able to compress. And with these shocks with more travel, it's a killer ride because it has room to do that. So you're not topping out, you're not bottoming out. Even with our lower height ones, with three inches of travel, it's still 30% more than stock. So you're getting a huge improvement 
and you're getting lower if that's what you're looking for. The Platinum Series is another level higher than the Premium. Ride quality is still very similar to the same, except for it gives you compression adjustments. So you've got eight different compression settings you can choose from on this canister to make the ride feel softer or firmer. So firmer is higher, softer is lower. So the way these work, it doesn't adjust preload, it adjusts internal dampening. So oil moves through this line and is metered here. It's either slowed down or sped up based on shaft speed and movement. So this makes the bike feel softer or firmer. You still adjust and set preload the exact same way based on rider weight and what you're carrying, but this gives you more elements to tune with. So you can run more preload than you normally would in a softer compression setting, or you can run lower preload than you normally would in a higher compression setting. This, this also allows you, what my favorite use for this is, is people that take long trips. They're on their bike for hundreds of miles in a day, days at a time. You're encountering a lot of different road conditions, smooth roads, choppy roads, bumpy roads, two-lane roads, highways, freeway speeds. Freeway speeds are a whole other thing because everything in the shock works on velocity, so it's speed sensitive. So the faster you go, the faster the shocks are going to move when you hit those bumps. Like a, a bridge over an overpass, it's going to have a lip, a sharp edge lip. That's going to go into the suspension. The suspension is going to in interpret that. It's going to feel that. With these shocks, if you're on a choppy road, you can make them softer and you won't feel none of that chop because it's just going to eat it right up. It's going to allow the suspension to move fast. If you go into a road that's got bigger holes and stuff like that where you're getting more suspension travel, you can go to a higher setting here and slow that travel down so it doesn't hit down and slam hard. So you get more options, more tuning capability. Great shock. It's what I use on my personal bike when I ride. I love the way they feel. But I also rode on all these, and I love the way all these feel. They're great shocks. They all work great. Just depends on how you use your bike and what you want to do with it as to what we can put you on that's going to suit you best. And that's what we're after. We're after giving you the best suspension you can have for the bike that you have and the way you use it. We've got a lot of options, more than any other brand on the market. We've got 36 different shocks that we can put on a Harley Bagger. The other guys, they got two. Standard and heavy. Let's take a look at the bike here. We've got the Premier Series mounted on these right now. So you can see down here where it mounts right to the factory locations. This shock is a 13 inch shock, but it's got to have a little bit lower ride height than your standard factory 13 inch shock. So if we look at this, this shock measures right now, center to center, 12 and an eighth inches. That's a 13 inch shock sitting on the bike at ride height. Well, it's not, it's ride height for the bike, but no rider. So once we put a rider on, we're gonna have more sag. With other brands of shocks, when you get them, you've gotta go through a sag setting process where you sit on the bike, you make measurements, you extend the suspension, you do some math, you figure out where your sag should be. With super shocks, we have the setting chart. So you don't have to do any measurements. Just go by the setting chart, because we've already figured out the sag amount. So setting this to the right number gives you the correct sag amount, then you just have to do the fine tuning process to suit you the best. So with this shock, we're gonna end up with about an inch and a half of sag. So that means our suspension has room to extend like this, or compress to go through a, a bump, or extend to go through a hole or a dip in the road. With the suspension in a neutral zone, it can move up and down and follow the road. Some brands offer rebound adjustment down here on the end. The rebound adjustment has very minimal benefit to the rider, which is why we don't offer it, because we feel if we built it and it had range to it, people are more likely to have it in the wrong setting and not have as good a ride as they would be if we just figure out what the dampening needs to be and build them that way. It makes it simpler, easier to use and set up, and quicker to get to the best ride that you can have. So <clears throat> with rebound dampening, if it gets to be too stiff, the suspension can't extend. So if it doesn't extend, it begins to feel firmer, stiffer, harder. So then you start adjusting here, but it's really the rebound adjustment that's the problem. So it gets you off base quickly if you don't know what you're doing, how to tune suspension. <clears throat> some places and some bikes and some models, it could have a benefit for riders that know what they're doing with it. But for most street riding bicycle or motorcycles, it's not going to be 
any benefit that's worth paying for. It's got a minimal benefit, but a lot of added cost. So a set of these shocks, you're looking at $650 for a set of these that go right on your bike, preload adjustment, easy to use, easy to set up, make a huge improvement to the ride. You're not going to get those harsh bottom outs that you get jolted off the seat. You're going to get a smooth ride over the little bumps in the road. But <clears throat> through testing these and developing these for a few years, I realized that the weak point was we didn't have enough travel for some of the bigger bumps and holes, especially on a full dresser touring model like this with a tour pack. And when you're loaded up, two people on the bike and you're taking a long highway trip or a long trip anywhere and you're counting those different road conditions, that's when we needed a shock with more travel to give us a better ride. So to figure out how to get more travel was easy. You just make a longer shock. But the suspension has, the motorcycle has limitations where this axle nut will hit the muffler. It really doesn't matter what brand of muffler you run. There's an interference point here if the shock is too long. So we were limited to a 13 inch shock in the stock location. So figuring out how to do that, and that's why we built the relocation mount that moves us back. Let me grab that. So that'll mount right in here and it moves our shock back to here. Now we can run a longer shock with more travel and still have the same ride height. Now we're talking about way better ride because now we've got more travel to go through those dips and holes and bigger bumps. So we're going to take a break here and um, mount up the Platinum Series so you can see what that looks like and we'll talk about that. Okay, we're back here. We got the Platinum Series mounted on the bike. This is the same shock length as our premium LT. This is the Platinum LT because it has the remote compression adjuster. So this is a 14 inch shock. Mounted on here, it's the same height as that 13 inch shock is. So we look here, 12 and an eighth. Right there, right where we want it to be. So we don't have any higher ride height, but we got a longer shock with more travel. So more travel keeps us from bottoming out, but it doesn't change, you know, it doesn't give us a problem here with exhaust clearance or with tire clearance in the fender because our bottom out dimension and our top out dimension is still the same length height wise. So it's a really good way to give us better suspension travel. But it's not just as easy as moving a mounting, buying a mounting block and moving your shock back here because it's now on a different angle and it's in a different location. So it's further back from the swing arm, from the axle. So the job of the shock is now different. We've got to be a lot different calibration on the compression side and a lot different, well, somewhat different on the spring settings too. So for most riders, it's a different spring and a different dampening combination, completely different. I mean, it's not even close. So the shock is properly tuned, which again is something that's exclusive to Super Shocks. No other brand has a mounting kit and a shock combination that does this gives you more travel and a lower ride height or even the same as a stock ride height. This shock, a 14 inch shock with three and a half inches of travel has the same ride height as a stock street glide with a 12 inch shock that only has two inches of travel. So we're an inch and a half more travel than your stock 12 inch shock. So that you can see that it's gonna make a huge improvement to the way the bike handles those bottom outs and bigger bumps and holes and stuff like that. Most importantly, like we talked about before, is it's got room to travel and follow the road. So you can compress and extend. With this set of shocks, you got the preload adjustment here, the same as all the rest of them. And we got this line going forward to the compression adjuster that's mounted up here on the passenger floorboard. We can mount these in a number of different places. This is my favorite place because it gives the rider the ability to reach down and turn this while you're on the bike. So you can account for the road when you feel it. You don't have to wait to get off or stop and do it. These can be mounted down here underneath the saddlebag. They can be mounted in the back underneath the saddlebag. They can be mounted back here behind the saddlebag where you've got to take the saddlebag off to get to them. But either way, you get a great shock with compression adjustability. It's easy to use, easy to set up, make your ride firmer or softer. We can kind of take a look at that here and see that on a softer setting, it's easier to compress. We go to a firmer setting and it's stiffer. So you can see that it's going to slow that suspension down. These are small changes to the shock, but make big changes to the way the bike feels. So shock setup and tuning 
for a motorcycle, especially ones like this, where the shocks are mounted to the swing arm and they're this far back, the spring setting and the dampening setting make a huge difference to the ride quality. So that's where, you know, Super Shocks comes in with precision tuned shocks. So we know, we can predict the way the ride is going to feel. We can control that very precisely and accurately to get great results rider after rider, no matter what they weigh or how they use their bike, because it's all in the numbers. If these bikes were built differently, the shocks were more forward, maybe they were a mono shock underneath like some other models have, the shock setup is less critical because it doesn't have as big an impact right back here, but this is right underneath the passenger. They feel everything, so if you want to do something good for your passenger, you definitely need to get a set of super shocks. This explains our all of our different series from premium to premier premium platinum so you get a better idea of what we got to offer to make your ride better and make riding this motorcycle a lot more fun right now we're going to take a break and go inside and show you how we build shocks from start to finish okay here we are at the shop we're going to go inside here and take a look around at what we do at super shocks so a lot of our history has been in racing shocks. We've been building racing shocks for dirt cars since 1997 and um, done a lot there with a lot of different cars and a lot of different drivers across the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South America, you know, racers all over are winning races still today with super shocks. We still build a ton of racing shocks and love that aspect of our business and the sport and the competition. It's, uh, it drives us to be better at what we do and to build a better shock. These cars run on dirt tracks, so it's kind of rough and tumble. They're banging wheels a lot. They're bouncing off of ruts and holes. So good suspension is really important for those cars. And it's allowed us to build a better motorcycle shock because we've become experts in dampening and controlling vehicle motion. When these cars have high horsepower, some of them are you know approaching a thousand horsepower now on dirt tracks. They need a lot of weight transfer and a lot of grip. We know how to build a shock that gives them more grip, more control, better tunability, better options for tuning the car with shocks and suspension than what they ever had before. You know, things have evolved dramatically through the racing world in suspension and cars are going faster and driving better and drivers are performing better because of better suspension. And Super Shocks has been a big part of that. You know, with different drivers through the years, you know, we've run a lot of different races, you know, Sammy Swindell and um, Sam Haferty and Chris Windham and Eric Gordon won little 500s with our shocks multiple times, I think five times. Um, Kevin Swindell, you know, a lot of different drivers, lots of them from guys that race at your local dirt tracks, which always get out and watch your local dirt track racers. It's a ton of fun. Great family time. You're going to love it. Great competition. All these guys have won races with Super Shocks. Dave Darlin there. Um, he's in the Hall of Fame. Um, lots of different guys. Fun aspect. Love that part of our business. In here is where we build our racing shocks. So here we got a brand new set of, this is a double adjustable. It's the same exact canister we use on the motorcycle shock. It's used on the racing shock too to tune the compression from a soft to a firm. These also have the rebound adjustment. Like we talked about there to where on here, it makes a big difference because we're dealing with a heavier car, more wheel weight, more suspension travel, more reasons to have rebound control on these shocks. We also build them in single adjustable versions, so it's just rebound adjustment. All the shocks are hand assembled, dyno tested and tuned. They go right into these shock dynos, get assembled, they get tested and tuned. The tuning on the race car shock is very specific, very accurate, has to be perfect, especially with the adjustable, having all those settings come out the same because these guys will have multiple sets of shocks for the same car and they all got to match so they can take one off and put another one on in the exact same way. The shocks last for a long time. Here's a set of shocks that we built back in 1999 they're in for service again so that set of shocks is you know 21 years old still using them today they don't wear out they get broken we repair them 
Here's another set of used shocks. You can see that one's all wore off, beat up from rocks. Still works. We can always repair them, always fix them up, always retune them, revalve them. Guys can use them for many years. This is where we do all the assembly, all the shim stacks, everything gets put in. The parts inventory is here, so the guys have access to it right away to get the shock repaired or a new one built. And here is where we're doing our motorcycle assembly, motorcycle shock assembly. So we start out with the shock parts that come back from anodizing and they're finished with machining. Now they're ready for assembly. So we've got the shim stacks here. All the shims are put in. They're all measured with a micrometer. They go in the right order. We got our build sheets there so the guys can, you know, shim them up and get them assembled. Once uh, the shaft is assembled, the uh, oil is here. It gets measured on a scale so we get the exact right amount of oil that goes in the shock. They have to measure the oil every time. Pour it into the shock. Shocks are assembled. Monotube gas shock so you can see the piston. It's the size of the bore. It's a thin wall body, lightweight aluminum. Monotube gas shocks. So there's a separator piston down here with gas on this side. After we assemble, we pressurize them. Once they're assembled, pressurized, then they come to the shock dyno. We mount them in the shock dyno, and we got one here, so we'll run it. We'll take a look at it. Shock dyno starts up and it cycles the shock at a speed. While it's doing this, it's measuring how much force it takes to go in each direction from zero up to 12 or 24 inches per second whatever we're testing at and then once it's done it gives us a reading here of it gives us a picture and the numbers and we can compare it to what the shock should be based on what we're building for and see if it's the same or if it's not if it's not the shock has to come back apart go to the bench be retuned back to the dyno and get set to make sure that we're building the shock exactly the way it's supposed to be for the rider we're building it for so it's going to have the right spring rate, the right dampening. It's going to be dyno tested tuned. All our shocks are serial numbered. So on the on the seal housing, you'll see a serial number. Those all get logged into our system. The dyno files get saved. So we know exactly what the shock was. If it ever comes back for any kind of service or any kind of anything, we can check it and see if it's the same. Down the road, 10 years down the road, you feel like, hey, this bike isn't riding the same. Send those shocks into us. We'll figure it out. We'll fix it. No problem. Lifetime guarantee. Any issue at all, the way our lifetime guarantee, again, is different than anybody else. If you find a problem with a set of super shocks, all we need is that serial number and we can send a replacement set. We don't need the set you have. You calling us and telling us that there's a problem is enough for us to know what you need. We get another set of shocks built, send them to you with a return label. You send the ones you have back. Then we're done. You got your shocks back on the bike. You're back riding. We got the shocks that need service back here. We're taking care of business. Let's go take a walk out in the machine shop. And you'll see how we make shocks. Actually, here's the packaging. So when we finish the shocks, they get the springs put on. Everything gets tightened up. Final check and wipe down. Then they go in the box. Setting chart, ready to go. That gets in there, packed up, shipping label, ready for UPS to pick up. Out in the machine shop here, this is where we make everything. With Super Shocks, we do everything from the beginning stages of designing and figuring out what to build. So we design it on a CAD system, make detailed drawings of what we're going to make, and then we bring it out here into the machine shop and we make it. Once we make it, we get it anodized, finished up, and then it's ready for assembly like you just seen. Here's some adjustment collars. They're uh, just finishing with machining. They need to be a little deburring and um, cleaning, and then they're ready for anodizing. So these are all done, ready to go out for anodizing. This stuff, these start out with two and a half inch round solid aluminum bar, and you can see it's machined to a very thin nut inside and out all the surface finishes are mirror finishes so everything is looks good and works good here's some shafts motorcycle shafts that are done with machining they're ready for final polishing and cleaning before assembly out here we've got um, some shaft pistons 
these pistons have been drilled. They're all drilled and machined, ready for final assembly, for cleaning and then final assembly in the shock. Here's uh, shock bodies back from anodizing. We've done the engraving and cleaning. They're now ready to go into the assembly room. They all get the bearings pressed in. We don't use a bushing, we use a monoball bearing. So it's long lasting and allows suspension movement without play so that the suspension stays tight but has movement to work and, and not bind. Binding creates rough ride and wear. Here's a drawing of how we start out with a shock body. So this was designed on a CAD system and turned into a part. We make a CNC program that makes the part. Over here, we got some internal racing shock parts that are being machined. Racing shafts that are ready for uh, machining on the ends and inside. Here's some more motorcycle shafts for different lengths, for different strokes, for different types of bikes and applications. Ready for final polishing. We got this machine here. This bar feeder is what it's called. Takes these bars, full length bar, we put them up, feeds them into this lathe. This lathe then does the machining in here. So we've got the raw stock come in here. We can do the machining. It's got a sub spindle over here on this side. So the sub spindle can come up and grab that part, transfer it over here, do the machining, drop it into this parts catcher. The parts come out here on the conveyor. So we go from a solid rod, this is the dust cover that goes inside, inside the spring on the shock body to keep the spring from rubbing the shock body and keep the threads clean so you can make easy adjustments. Sealed on both sides. So those come out here, go into the third kitchen, ready for uh, cleaning and final inspection and then off for assembly. That's how we finish our parts and make them. Let's take a look at how we start out. Here we have raw aluminum that's just come in. This aluminum is made in the USA. Comes in a solid bar like that. And these make shock bodies, just like this. When we're done, it's machined all the way around, inside and out. It takes about four steps through the process to make these happen. And we process them and make them beautiful parts. Here we have material for the relocation studs. So these steel bars get turned into these studs. Just like that. That's how we make things at Super Shocks. Thanks for taking time to watch the video. Give us a call, give us an email. Let's find out what we can do for you to make your ride better.